In this video, we're going to go over my DIY Cam Link Pro running on my M1 MacBook Air. Let's get into it. One of the advantages of using a PC, in particular a desktop PC, is the ability to customize your internal components. Now, as far as video creation or live streaming is concerned, you're able to use a number of video capture cards. Now, one of the recent capture cards that have come out in recent days is the Elgato Cam Link Pro. It gives you the ability to have four HDMI inputs into one PCIe capture card. And that gives you a lot of flexibility as far as creativity is concerned, a lot of different camera angles, and you can use them all at once. Now, me being a Mac user, I have very limited options as far as capture cards is concerned. I'm using the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro, which is a video switcher, but it doesn't allow me to use multiple cameras at once. My name is Patrick, and this is Everyday Tech, everyday tech for everyday people. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my DIY rigged up Camlink Pro running off my M1 MacBook Air here. And I'm gonna be using four different USB capture cards here. So let's have a little bit of fun and see what we can do. So before we get into this demo, let me show you the capture cards I'm using here. I'm using four different USB capture cards. First is the Camlink 4K, it's an ever popular one. This is about a hundred bucks or over a little hundred bucks. And I'm using three of these USB generic capture cards. Now these have been very reliable for me. The reason I have three of those, just in case something in my setup goes wrong, I have three backups as far as capture cards are concerned. Now, the, that's another thing is though, these are 1080p and so the Camlink Pro does 4K as far as the inputs are concerned. But really in my setup, 1080p is good enough for me as far as streaming and video creation is concerned. And even my A10 Mini Pro only does 1080p as well. So I could get four of these, but these are a little bit over $400, uh, $100 I mean, and that'll cost $400 plus. And so it gets very impractical after that too. So so let's get into this demo and let's, let's see how this works. So let me show you my setup here as far as how we're gonna do this. I have my M1 MacBook Air here. I have my CalDigit Thunderbolt 3 dock here. Then I have my Elgato Camlink 4K, it's gonna be connected to this camera here. Then I have the three different USB capture cards, one to my camcorder here, one to a GoPro that's off screen, and then the last one is to my iPad Pro, uh, running out from a USB-C to an HDMI cable uh, using AirMix Pro, I believe, or AirMix Solo as a camera output. So that'll give me a more of a clean HDMI output that way. So let's go ahead and do this. Now I'll just say this up front. I tried to use my Anchor USB-C uh, dock here to try to get this to work and I could get it to work maybe for a couple seconds and then it just really overloaded the system. So uh, we're going to see if using a dock will help with this as well. And I'll say again, this is not the most practical thing in the world here. So uh, and I'm going to show you how we set this up and I'm going to put it into Ecamm and I'll show you how we bring in those different cameras into Ecamm as well. So let's get into it. Okay, so the order I'm going to do this in is I'm going to plug in my camera here first with Camlink 4K and then I'm going to plug in this camcorder here and then I'm going to do the uh, GoPro over there and then plug in my uh, iPad. So as I plug them in, I'm going to plug them in individually bring them into Ecamm here, and I'm gonna show you how I'm setting it up in Ecamm, and I'm just gonna bring them up one by one. So let's see how this works here, okay? So first, I'm gonna plug in here, and the way I'm plugging them in is I have uh, some USB-C dongles, I have some USB-A extension cords that came with some of these capture cards, and the reason why is because if I plug in these generic ones directly into there, I'm gonna run out of space because they're a little bit fatter. So I need these extension cords to help me uh, kind of get space. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the Cam Link 4K. And we're gonna plug this guy, turn on that camera. Okay, so I have it already set here. I, I had some of these set before. So now you can see that the Cam Link is showing and here is my camera here. So 
Okay, the next thing is we're gonna plug in this camcorder and I forgot what slot I put it in as far as in, cam, um, in Ecamm here, but we are gonna plug this in. Let's plug it in one of this top ones, ports here. Okay, so it shows up right away in this bottom slot here. So now I have two cameras going. Uh, seems to be running no problem here. Okay, now I'm gonna plug in the GoPro that's up there. It's using another USB cord here. Let's plug that in and see what happens. So I am getting some green bars there. Let's see if I can fix that. Let's move this over a little bit. Uh, see if I can switch it to this. So it doesn't seem to be working right now. So let me, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on and off this uh, camera first to see if that'll work or jog, jog it. Okay, so I turn on and off the GoPro and that seems to work. So it's in this bottom slot right here. Okay, now I have one more camera that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna plug in this input here. This is a USB-C input. And this is hook, hooked up to my iPad here. And let's see if I can get a fourth input here. And I think I got it. Yes, I do. So let me, let me put all these aligned here. Um, because of this iPad, I, okay. Because this iPad does not do a full screen, it has a little bit of a, border around it, I need to be able to get to there and stretch it out a little bit more. And that's the beauty of Ecamm. Let's see if that works here. So now I have four different angle cameras here. This is so ridiculous. This is just like very unnecessary, but let's say you have this uh, and you are in a pinch and you just want four different camera angles. And actually I can probably add an additional camera here and we're gonna do this here. I'm gonna add my FaceTime camera right here. So now I have five different cameras. And actually, I have my A10 mini that I could actually plug in, but I'm not gonna do, uh, there's no reason to do it. But I have this four different camera angles, right? But I actually have a five camera angle here, right? And actually, let me plug in my A10 mini and let's see how that works. Okay, so I do have my Chromecast plugged into my A10 mini here. So if I plug this in, I'm gonna plug it in directly into there. Oh, I lost the new input. So I think some of the cables are actually uh, a little bit um, loose here. But let me just see if I can bring up another camera here. Let's change this to the black magic design. So now I have potentially six different camera sources here. And actually it's nine because the A10 mini has four different inputs built into it, right? So I'm gonna take this out of live demo mode here. And yeah, this is kind of ridiculous, but let me bring it back down. Let me uh, get rid of the different inputs I had started. And these are just four different inputs. So if I do a clap right now, and I can play that back right now to see if there's any delay. So I'm really happy to say that having this dock really allows you to kind of push your machine a little bit more. A lot of the processing is happening here and going through that Thunderbolt type of uh, deal. Now, when I was using this dock, it was really overloading the USB uh, controllers there. So I think all the stuff, all the processing of that is happening in this dock here and it's able to really push it has plenty of the bandwidth to handle all of it it's a matter if the controller can handle all those inputs at once and really this dock really does handle that okay so what have we learned here well i'm not sure all i know is it works but one thing i would say is i would not use this on a paid gig or an actual production i would use this maybe personally but what this allows you to do is have four different inputs in a very cheap way now I plugged in the A10 mini, but let's say you don't have an A10 mini and let's say you have four of these generic 
capture cards, you know, and check out my video on generic capture cards, but I got these for average about like 10 bucks each. So that's only $40 for having four different inputs, right? And then you have the cam link here, which is a little bit over $100. So it's not practical to get four cam link 4Ks there. Now I do have the 810 mini that does four different inputs, but the difference between using an 810 mini like this, and let's say these four inputs, or a Camlink Pro is that you can use those as four separate cameras and you can do little cool things with that as I did here with these overlays, right? You can use them all at the same time. With the A10 Mini Pro and the A10 Mini line of things, you can really only use one or two different things unless you get an A10 Mini Pro Extreme. You can do more cool stuff with that using Super Source and different things. So, uh, but here, this is kind of a cheap solution. So. I would say definitely not practical though for production. And these things do get quite hot. And so the longevity of these capture cards, I haven't had one break on me yet, but the reason why I do have three is they're kind of a backup to a backup to a backup, just in case something here goes out. So the cool thing is I can really put as many inputs here. I've really had six inputs if you include my webcam here. And actually I have, I can do up to about nine inputs really here because if you include my A10 mini, there are four different inputs in there. So I have all nine input camera potentially. I don't have nine cameras to input them into, but anyway, thanks for joining me on this short video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing until the next one. See ya.